Michael in Ossipee, New Hampshire. I hope I pronounced that right. See more better with freeprescriptionlenses.com. And I really hope I pronounced that right. Before I start making Transitions Extra Active Green Progressive Lenses with Crizal Anti-Glare for your Prada frames that you have sent me, I just want to quickly give a shout out to his parents, Gary and Denise in Gonic, New Hampshire. Again, please forgive me if I did not pronounce that right. Michael went through a very traumatic period a few years ago when he lost his wife to pancreatic cancer. I almost know what that's like. My wife lost her brother to the same evil crab, as she calls it, that cancer crab. The same debilitating thing that, that spread throughout his body, but it started in his pancreas. He died at the age of 33, which is way too young. Even if it had been 83, that is still too young. So I know about that. I did not ever get a chance to meet them. This was before I met my wife. But my heart goes out to you. But... He has learned a valuable lesson, which life is for the living. He has someone special in his life, and I looked it up. Ossipi happens to be an hour and a half from Portland, Maine, which I go to every Columbus Day. I fly in there and then drive up to Damariscotta for the Pumpkin Festival before going all the way to Acadia National Park during peak color season. So, Michael, next Columbus Day weekend... Come join me in Portland, or better yet, come join me in Damariscotta, Maine for the Pumpkin Festival. You will be able to find me. I'm wearing an orange tuxedo. I make it look better than anyone with the exception of the guys in Dumb and Dumber. Okay, so let's begin. This is this frame he sent me. It is the Prada. Don't take my word for it. Hopefully my camera's good enough. It is the VPR60T, which I think stands for titanium. It is a 51 eye size in the color VA2-101, which looks to be blue and platinum, which I love. I love anything blue. And speaking of which, <coughs> he is getting the Essilor Ideal Advance Invisible No-Line Progressive Bifocal. It goes by million names, multifocal, but that's all the above. I had him put a couple dots on his lenses before sending them to me directly in front of his pupil. That way I would know where to place the optical center, the vertical height of the lens so that he could see his best. So anyone else out there who needs invisible bifocals for their frames, put a dot on your lens. Or even if you're sending me your own frame, even for single vision lenses, it's a good idea because nowadays so many frames are deep and they sit below the pupil. That tells me exactly where to place the vertical height. It's the same thing I measure should you be sitting in front of me, but since we're... 15 hours apart, I can't do that. Although we can meet halfway in Baltimore, probably. So, let's go ahead and begin. I'm going to pop out your original demo lenses, one of which says Prada. And I'm going to place it into the tracing element of my blocker. I always say the edge. That's the hardest thing for me to do. I had to pay attention this time to make sure I was doing it right. That little stylus pops up. It's going to go around and trace the inside bevel of the right side of the frame before doing the same thing on the left. Here at FreePrescriptionLenses.com, where everyone loves a bargain and no one is disappointed in quality. You buy a genuine, authentic frame from me and you'll receive one free pair of clear single vision prescription lenses or non-prescription fashion lenses. My receipt has my federal ID tax number, so if you have vision insurance or flex dollars, you will get reimbursed for this purchase, whether they are prescription or not. However, I do not sell this Prada frame. He mailed it to me, and so... Of course, these aren't single vision lenses. It doesn't matter with progressives. It's the same price if you're using your own frame or not. So let's begin. That is the shape we'll be cutting. I'm going to forward it to the next screen known as the layout screen. That is the shape only magnified. Let me minify it down to the correct size that we will be cutting. Magnify it again while I'm working on it. I'm going to go ahead and enter his pupillary distance, which is 31.5, excuse me, 30.5, 61 divided by 2 is 30.5. Don't ask me what it is divided by 3. I never get it. So the computer starts at 32.5. I'm going to tap this minus button four times. It goes down half millimeter increments till we get to 30.5. I want to raise the optical height, the vertical decentration of the lens to 28. I'm going to tap this plus button numerous times until we get to 28. Now, this is set up for a single vision lens. I'm going to change the layout screen to a progressive it gives me a different graph. The reason why I went ahead and prep your lenses, 
This dot is going to sit directly in front of your pupil. Every progressive lens has two little laser marks on the side, one with the brand of the progressive, where that line is drawn is the strength of the bifocal. I'm going to lay that out. Well, I'll show you. Put that dot there. Now, the blue cross is the geometric center of the frame. If you were to measure vertically and horizontally, that is dead center. That's why it's called the geometric center. Your eye is above that and inset. So I'll put the optical center, the PD, right there where it's supposed to be. These other two dots tells me that it's oriented and they're just right and that it's not crooked or, or anything like that. That is if all goes well. Of course, hey, let me back up. I need two blocks of which I call Jenny from the block. I need to attach two double-sided adhesive stickers of which I've got two right here. I'm going to put uh, stick the, the black side is the sticky side. I'm going to stick that onto the first one. Stick that onto this one. Now on the back is a silver button. That is a magnet. It's going to do its job twice today. The first time is right here, right now. I'm going to attach it to something magnetical there in the arm. Whoops, there we go. Now, let's make sure everything is laid out properly. Center dot laid out, laid out correctly. And now I'm going to hit that button and the arm's going to come down and place the block onto uh, the right lens. So let's do the same thing now for the unright lens. Pull the paper away and make the black side sticky. Now if your pupillary distance were different, I would enter that now, but because I divided it in half, it is equal on both sides. The vertical height is the same. Do the layout the same. Put that dot there where it belongs. Kids, see how I'm doing it? See how I'm laying that out right there? <coughs> there you go, kids. Oh, oh, those two dots were off. Okay. See, kids, you do it like that. Anyone learning this, you do it like that. <coughs> the old man cough. Why am I coughing like this? I'm, <laughs> I'm 10 years old. I shouldn't have a cough like this. Okay, so hit that button. The arm comes down, places the block onto the unright lens. So this is the edger. This is what costs $40,000. It does all the work while I run my mouth. It weighs 200 pounds, which I used to, but I've lost 10% of my body weight and I'm now down to a nice lean 180. I was at my fighting weight. I call that because when I get up to 200, I feel like fighting. But uh, where was I? Oh yeah, cutting the lenses. So I recommend everyone go out, buy their own, put it on your kitchen counter. Then you can cut your own lenses at home for your own frames. You won't need this guy anymore with the blue orange glasses to cut them for you. So the actual cutting wheel is this heavy grit wheel that's going to act like a heavy grit sandpaper to grind away. It's actually diamond tipped, but it will grind away your lens material until it's the final size. This wheel in the center, that channel, that little bevel, that's what's going to put the bevel, the V-shaped bevel on the lens. So it goes inside the bevel of the frame. Now I'm going to go ahead and press that on there, make sure it's sticking tight. I'm going to bring up the shape of your lens onto the computer. These are actually plastic lenses, not polycarb. We're going to cut these in plastic today because the transition is extra active in this, this brand of Essilor lenses, which is the Ideal Advance. It's one of their premium digital freeform lens. They have, I normally cut a lot with polycarbonate. I can get that in gray and brown, but the extra active needs to be done in plastic today. But with your prescription, polycarbonates are usually thinner, but with your prescription, you don't have to worry about that. I'm not going to polish the edge of your lenses. I'm not going to put a bevel on the front surface, the convex surface of the lens. Convex curve this way. I'm only going to put a safety bevel on the rear concave surface of your lens, which is this back surface. And that concludes your vocabulary lesson of the day. Please turn the page. Ding! So now the magnet is going to do its job a second time today. It's going to hold it in place into the chuck, or you know it's coming or as I like to call it, the Charles, because I don't know this machine well enough to call it Chuck. I remind everyone, if you have a funnier joke, write it down on a $100 bill and mail it to me, and I'll read it off the air and give you credit. You don't even have to put your name on there. I'll recognize your handwriting. But Michael, thank you for staying. This is part eight of a 250 million person series of making a pair of glasses for everyone in the United States. This is series eight, so keep up. Make sure you stick around and watch every video until the last installment of 250 million. So I'm going to hit the green arrow, which is start in every language. The door closes, the clamp shuts, and then the lens is going to be traced by two... Did I hit plastic? I did hit plastic. The lens is going to be traced by two white styluses, making sure that's large enough to fit into the frame. You can see as it's going around tracing the shape. 
The old carpenter saying measure twice, cut once is measuring the thickness of the lens to know exactly and precisely where to place the bevel for the least amount of edge thickness of which you're not going to have any anyway. But on strong prescriptions I can move it forward or backwards depending on how it needs to look in the frame. The water is spraying onto the lens which you normally don't see. Plastic, high index plastic and Trivex cut wet where polycarbonate cuts dry. These also cut faster so I better hurry up. So you got the transitions which I'll demonstrate later. But you also have the Crizal Anti-Glare, which is three features in one. It eliminates glare when driving at night, especially driving at night in the rain. But from street lights, stop lights, computer screens, overhead fluorescent lights, and the such. It also goes by the initials ARC, Anti-Reflective Coating. So it reduces reflections. When someone's looking at you, they're not looking at the reflection in your glasses. They're looking at just your eyes, so it makes for much better eye contact. Plus some pictures. If someone takes a picture of a flash, you won't see it, or you won't see the camera in selfies. You also have an aspheric lens, meaning that it's not spherical, it's flatter to fit in today's flatter curvature frames. A spherical lens, which this is, gives you an ugly cosmetic fishbowl appearance, and we don't want that. Now the third feature, it's okay, I'm not using that lens. The third feature is that it comes with the industry's hardest scratch coating, the anti-glare coating. You literally vaporize eight different coatings onto your lens. So because of the time and the expense, they put the industry's hardest scratch coating on there. Now if you notice, I just opened that door with my mind. I can do lots of things with my mind. I can melt ice with my mind. I can. It just takes me a couple hours, but I can do it. Although it's 18 degrees currently here, still recovering from the snow on the east coast, which I cannot complain about because I'm sure you got much more of it. And Ossipee, New Hampshire, and I'm sure Jerry and Denise got just as much in Gonic, New Hampshire. Beautiful state there, by the way. So, I've got my Phillips head screwdriver. Hello, Philip. I'm doing the old Lefty Lucy, and what I'm doing is I'm holding it upside down until the screw head comes out. I'm doing that because I don't want the screw to fall out. If it does, it will fall in the tray. That's why I'm holding it over that. I'm going to take the lens and gently tuck it into the frame trying to keep my finger on top of that screw head there we go so it doesn't pop out and because I really if it were to pop out if it didn't fall in here it would bounce and go onto the floor and it's really embarrassing when you're on your hands and knees looking for a screw on the floor it does happen Michael it's just not gonna happen in your video so okay that one is done let me make sure it's the old righty tighty we're good now we can go ahead and put the left lens in. I did say left, I meant to say unright. Flip that over to un R, hit the green start button, and just like before, the door closes, the clamp shuts, and then the lens is going to be traced again by the two white styluses, making sure that it's large enough to go around. You can see as it's starting to trace the shape, follow my finger, follow my finger, boop. And again, measuring the thickness of the lens to know where to place the bevel so you have the least amount of edge thickness of which, look, you ain't got none. Look at that. Look at that. See, kids? See how I do that? Yeah, that's how you do it, kids. So, with that, the left lens beginning cutting, I'm going to go ahead and continue to work on the right, pop the block off, put that back down in there, set that down, take the sticker, work on my art piece. Oh yeah, doesn't that look better? Imagine how this is going to look after 250 million pairs of glasses. So we're going to come down here and read the prescription. I'm going to, well, first turn it on. You know, these newfangled machines, you got to turn them on. And the dot is on there very lightly. So I'm going to put that on there a little bit darker so you can see. I'm going to put the lens in just above that black dot. Spin the axis wheel to 110. 110. Put it in the viewfinder just above that dot. When I read the power, if this would stay still. Where's my flashlight? You know, I've got a smaller one. I just can't find it. I am getting plus one. That's because in the unit of measurement we use in the optical world, it's called a diopter, spelled D-I-O-P-T-E-R, unless you can figure out a better way to spell it. You are far-sighted. You need far, four steps of magnification to see far away, and then an additional 225 to see up close. But once, so you're on the fourth rung of a ladder, you have an additional one step, one measly quarter step of astigmatism in the right eye. That's because you have two curves on your eyes. One curve this way, which is plus one, which is four steps. Your fifth step is slightly steeper, and it's how you line up those two curves so everything looks nice and crisp because that's what astigmatism does. It makes sixes and eights look alike with the letters P and F. 
So we're going to turn that fine tune knob to 110. A straight line is 0 to 90 to 180, so we're going to turn just past the 90 to about 110. Now, your left eye, you need five steps of far-sided correction and three steps of astigmatism correction. And we're going to turn that fine-tune knob to 80. Just before the 90th meridian, we're going to come back here. You should be old enough to remember the old car radios that had a red light on there. You go around a curve, or if you're up in the mountains, you start to get a little static, and that red light starts to blink. You turn the knob just a little bit to fine-tune it. The red light comes on and you hear the music perfectly. That's what we're doing. We're turning that fine tune knob. 110 for the right eye, 80 for the left. Now, if you missed any of that, let me recap. <laughs> you know, when the clown gets to laugh at work, it's a good day at work. So, where were we at? Oh, check the astigmatism correction. One quarter and we end up at plus 75. One tick mark away from half. 0 0.25, 0 0.50, 75, 1. That's because, remember, you got plus one, minus a quarter, we end up at plus 75. Now for the left eye, it's going to start out at plus one and a quarter, and then we check your astigmatism correction. If all goes well, we should end up at, my, at plus 50. Is that right? We'll see. We'll check my math in a little bit. Hey, hey, cut it out. Stop moving around. Let me tighten the bolt on there. All right, so let's come back down here, as we say here in the Dirty South, or as someone says here in the Dirty South. Wait, didn't I just say it? I'm going to dry everything off with my paper towel, blot, blot, dab. Oop, bring the tray back over. Well, I can leave this up. Maybe your product case would catch the screw if it were to fall. So, lefty Lucy. Now, with it upside down, I'm going to put the left lens in. I keep saying left. I mean not to do it. Very gently, not letting that screw pop out. Get everything lined back up. Give it the old righty tidy, the old college try. This time I'm gonna use my little rubber mat, which protects the finish of my table against your frame. No, I'm just kidding. It protects your frame against my tabletop. But hey, I still wanna protect my table. When they came to install this, I haven't told anyone. This is new, this is fresh content. When they installed my edger, the installation guy, when he was putting it, this 200 pounds on the table, set it down and caused that little dent right there. You guys see that? I didn't say anything because I was just happy to have it. But that's, I'm all, see if I had this little thing here, I could have protected it. <laughs> I did have it here in some of my videos, but I kept wiping it off. So I moved it over here so I wouldn't wipe it off again. See, that's why I stick to my old bad jokes. You don't want the fresh content. Tell me when to stop. Tell me when to stop. Tell me when to stop. Did I... Oh, okay, I heard you say it. Okay, so let's come back down. Yeah. I think it's a record for me saying that in videos now. It's the cold weather. My tongue doesn't work. Or is that how you say it up in up in north? Yeah. I'm going to put it in just above that black dot. Read the power. And I'm getting... There it is one and a quarter one tick mark away from one and a half now let's check your astigmatism correction what i'm seeing in here i have three lines i don't know if you can see that let's just try there's three lines in there and now when i check your astigmatism correction we end up with three thicker lines can you guys see in there i can't see what you guys are seeing i'm gonna have to come back and watch the video oh heaven forbid i should have to watch one of my videos painful enough for you guys can you imagine how painful it is for me oh there we are plus 50 exactly halfway between zero and one i couldn't have made that any better if i'd done it myself so your pupillary distance is 61 i'm going to turn the card around and when i measure against i'm going to place my pd stick against my thumb on your right lens and then when we hold it up to the left lens we're getting 61 millimeters so that is made perfectly i want to check the vertical height which is 28 I do that this way to the bottom of the frame, not directly below it at that curve, but at the middle of the frame. Sometimes you can even do it from behind. And I'm getting 28. 28. Man, the kit is good. So this is the point in every video that as I clean your lenses, I mentioned that when you get these in the mail, and of course free shipping anywhere in the U.S., and last time I checked, New Hampshire is still in the U.S., but when you get these in the mail, there's a small chance that these could fit too loose or too tight. However, there's an 80% chance that one side is going to sit higher than the other. That is because 80% of people have one ear that is higher than the other. And because of that statistic, 99% of all optical shops will do free adjustments if you ask them. I see a dot. I see a dot. 
So just stop by your local place and just tell them if it's too loose or too tight or high on one side. It only takes about 30 seconds to a minute to adjust this pair of Pradas perfectly so they fit well. Now, of course, I also send out a selfie request to have your picture on the website. But not only that, I send out cleaning instructions not only for your frame and lenses, but for the Prada cloth that you should have still that you didn't mail to me or I would show it in the video here. My cleaning cloth, my premium microfiber cleaning cloth, as well as your Crizal cloth that comes with it. That's right, that's what you do with them. You just slam it down there. See how I did that, kids? But I field test every cleaning cloth before I mail it to make sure that it works. I don't want to send out a defective cloth. Plus, I'm just too lazy to reach into my pocket and pull the one out. So I'm going to use yours. So when you get this in the mail and you see a wrinkle on it, you know it works, Michael. You can't say that you can't clean your lenses with it because you saw me do it. So this is what your lenses look like clear. Let's go ahead and activate the Transitions Extra Active Green portion of your lenses. This is going to be way cool. I'm going to expose them to a strong burst of light in my Transitions. Lenses that adapt to changing light conditions. Display unit. Don't believe me? See for yourself. And for the comfort, convenience, and protection, period, 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 I'll try it now. So as you can see, all transition lenses take about 30 to 45 seconds to turn dark. When you go outside, it takes a little bit longer, 45 seconds to a minute 15 to return back to clear when you come back inside. Now all transition lenses, Michael, pay attention here, all transition lenses get dark on day one and continue to darken every day for the first couple weeks are exposed. After that, they will work for years with maximum performance. Now the only time transition signature 7 lenses won't work is if you're behind the windshield of a car. Your windshield absorbs all the sun's harmful ultraviolet rays, which would cause your dashboard to crack from sitting in the sun. And that's why they don't turn dark in a car. You don't have to worry about that because you got the paid a little bit extra for the transitions extra active. They'll get about 30 to 50 percent, depending on your car while you're driving. Everyone wants sunglasses while they're driving. And so they've made improvements to the transitions in the extra active series. Now, they're also temperature sensitive, meaning they'll get darker when it's 85 degrees and below than they will when it's 95 and above. Except, again, you have the extra active. Those do get darker in the hotter weather. It's designed for people who are outside a lot and extra active outdoors. So, now if you have a convertible or a motorcycle, regular transitions will darken. Of course, these will. Now, how about that? So, again, we're, this is the first time they've turned dark. Come on, Michael, we talked about this. They'll, they'll keep getting darker, don't you remember? Now, this is the extra active green. As I keep running my mouth, these are going to return back to virtually clear. The extra active, well, regular transition signature 7 lenses have about 3 to 5% hue while indoors. In fact, I can show you mine. I have the regular transition 7 in mine. I wish I'd done a comparison that way. Put mine back on so I can see what I'm doing. But if this returns back to clear during the video, I'll do that as it continues to lighten. But but this is the green again you can get them in gray or brown but this looks awesome it almost is like the ray-ban g15 green this color is only they've been gray and brown for years they've just recently come out with the green in the last couple years and the extra active green is still not made in all materials yet i'd have to if you have a high prescription i'd have to check to see if it's available in a high index 167 or 174 it's just not available in every material yet but that is it michael in Ossipee, New Hampshire. I hope you enjoyed watching. I told you I can't find my flashlights. As I cut Transitions Extra Active Essilor Ideal Invisible Progressive Lenses for your Prada VPR 60T, color VA2101, and the 51 eye size VAZ. Did I say two? VAZ101. I wrote it down wrong. And I know you've been through some tough times recently. In a few of my recent videos, I've been talking about all the books that have made me feel better about life as I've gone through a personal growth as well. One of the best books is, which is not this one in my hand, but the same author, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. That one was so transformational for me. My wife just for the holidays got me the eighth habit. I've yet to read it because I'm in the middle of another book and I don't want to stop halfway through on this one because I know I'll go all the way through it. The other thing I like to do, I'm the nerdy guy who always carries pens in the pocket and my PD stick. I now carry a yellow highlighter so I can go through and highlight all the things that I think are important in every book that I read. So, 
But the reason I'm mentioning this, Michael, you went through a period of growth and, and inner reflection that caused you to have to reach down deep inside to continue wake up every day and moving on with your life. I would love to know if there's any book that brought you peace and comfort and helped you get through your difficult times and made you into a better person. If so, leave it in the comment section. Speaking of which, if anyone has any questions or comments, you can email me at freeprescriptionlenses at gmail.com or simply click the contact me button on the website. Or better yet, as I've started mentioning, leave a comment in the section below the description because someone else may be able to read your comment and learn from it just the way we learn from books. Heming, or no, who was it? Who was it? I'll have to come back to you, but I just read in a book the other day that a book is the most loyal friend you can have. But if there's a book that if someone else is watching this video now, if someone else has a book that has inspired them, please leave that in the comment section and mention why it is that that book spoke to you the way it did and how you're living your life now. So if you've liked what you've seen here, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel or you can follow me on Instagram at Free Prescription Lenses or on Twitter as Free RX Lenses. Again, this is free, See More Better with FreePrescriptionLenses.com. Everyone else has got the chance to see now how I bring that love and feeling back to glasses. And you can all agree, now that's Mo Better.